homes. That's why they shiver at the thought of an EMP attack. America relies on an electric grid based on 1880s systems. It's so bad it could give out at any moment without an EMP attack. In 2011 alone, there were 3,071 blackouts in the U.S. That amounts to 85 days of blackouts, while the average duration of a blackout is three and a half hours. Just think of how often the power goes out in California or New York, and that's without an EMP. So in just a few years, the power grid might be overwhelmed by national demands. And here's the really scary part. This may sound unbelievable, but building an EMP device is not expensive or difficult. A small EMP device that fries your cell phone can be built with just a few bucks, some batteries, and spare parts you can find in a camera. Even 12-year-olds build EMP devices for science projects. There's no need for fancy technologies or billion-dollar investments to make it. And all it takes is not 100, not even 50, but just one warhead to be detonated above the U.S., and the effects would be irreversible. HEMP stands for High Altitude Electromagnetic Pulse. It's an EMP device that can be strategically detonated at an altitude of 20 miles above the surface of our country that will permanently cripple our power grid. And let's face it, the U.S. hasn't exactly been making friends over the past decades. North Korea, Iran, Russia, Afghanistan, China, all the enemies we've been making back since World War II have the power to detonate an HEMP over U.S. soil. And as if HEMPs aren't easy enough to build, any kind of warhead can be easily bought on the black market, especially an HEMP device. In fact, these enemy countries will gladly give this weapon to a terrorist organization like ISIS. They reap all the rewards of crushing the U.S. without any risk. However, the real danger of an EMP is it could happen without any signs or warnings. Unlike an economic collapse that's more like boiling a frog, when we would finally figure out that an EMP is struck, it would be too late. Just imagine you're heading to the kitchen to have breakfast. Usually you hear noise on the background, TV, radio, anything. But today there's a deadly silence, and you felt something's a bit off. You go to the kitchen and your wife tells you she can't cook breakfast because there's no power. You then notice there's no lights probably just a normal blackout. You pour a bowl of cereal and start eating it. You're halfway through your breakfast, but then you notice your neighbors gathered outside in one big disoriented crowd. Probably the blackout affected most of the neighborhood. That's when one of your kids comes over to complain that the cell phone doesn't work. You explain that it can't be charged because of the blackout, but you check your phone and it doesn't work either. Maybe this isn't just a plain blackout. So you go outside to talk to your neighbors. All of them experienced the same crazy stuff as you did. One of them has a radio. You can hear something. There's been an EMP attack. No invasion, but the power grid is down indefinitely. This will be the last time you'll see your neighbors like this. You know you're prepared for anything, but the possibility of an EMP attack never occurred to you. This is not a drill. It's the real thing. A week later, you're knee-deep in hell. You now realize that you're underprepared at best. Your food and water supply are almost gone and you're freezing. Most of the food is rotten and the kids are scared and cold. You managed to protect your home so far, but in the last couple of days, riots have started. People are starting to turn on each other. They went from civil to psychotic in just a few moments. They're desperate. They need food and you still have some. Across the street you see fire spreading on your next door neighbor's lawn. Looters are running the streets of your once peaceful neighborhood. You haven't seen any of your neighbors in weeks. You might have to leave your home if you want to survive. You heard rumors about people being shipped off to FEMA camps, but that's not the place for you. Soup lines for your entire family? Is that what it comes down to? One of your kids has a fever. The antibiotics don't seem to work that much. What should you do? And this is just the first few weeks. It'll take years to restore the grid. You may think the government's going to step in and it'll get better, but it gets even worse. An event so catastrophic will trigger a number of death waves. The first people will die right after the EMP. The elderly and people on life support. Even though hospitals have backup generators, they'll be fried by the EMP. The chronically ill are wiped out next. Without hospitals or pharmacies being able to function, people won't be able to take their necessary medication. Just think about it. If you're diabetic, you might need insulin. Even if you have a large enough stash to last you throughout the entire collapse, insulin needs to be kept at low temperatures. And with your fridge out of commission, your stockpile of insulin will become useless in a blink of an eye. All other medications that are heat sensitive will suffer the same fate. The third wave of deaths would be triggered by poor sanitation, caused by no waste pumping or garbage collecting, and by the first death waves that obviously would create massive hygiene problems to the unprepared, triggering a massive pandemic and the last death wave will be caused by desperate looters. They will prey on the weak.